there's a community in Germany called Oberammergau. Um, and in 1632, uh, the bubonic plague ravished Bavaria, much of, much of Europe. People of Oberammergau prayed for protection to be saved from this plague. And they made a vow that they would tell the story of Christ and his saving love if they had been spared, which they were and which they've been doing now for over 380 years. So every 10 years, the small town reenacts the passion of our Lord, the events of Holy Week. Uh, the cast is over 2,000 members, and you have to have either been born in Oberammergau or lived there for 20 years if you want to be in the cast. Uh, so it's a community event uh, to be able to, to, to do that. Uh, anyone ever been to that? Uh, I know my, my, some of you have. Uh, and uh, and Deb, Deb Nahorniak said, boy, if we want... If, they only do it once every 10 years. If we want to go, I can help coordinate a trip for that. So talk to Marsha or Rowans or something like that if you, uh, th if you think that might be something you're interested in. And Deb said, I'd be glad to put it together for you. Anyway, they, every, every year, they, they, or every 10 years, they gather and, and uh, tell the Passion story, the Holy Week story. It's six hours long. It's in German. Uh, but we, uh, most, even those who don't speak German get the story We've heard this is our story. We know this story. Our telling uh, this week is going to be a little smaller scale, uh, but no less important. And so I'm going to pick up our, begin our Holy Week reading with the Gospel of Matthew where we left off out in the narthex where we began. When Jesus entered into Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Now, there were two, two groups that were here, right? There were the crowds who knew, uh, the, uh, uh, the people who had followed Jesus, who knew wh who he was, uh, who had followed him, you know, for years and were with him. But then there was the crowd who were, who were saying, what is, what is going on? Who, who is this? And that's the question that needs to be addressed. Who is this one who comes in? The cries the, of, of the crowd were for Hosanna. Now, the word Hosanna simply means save us, right? It's something, if you needed help, your cry was Hosanna. Um, it wasn't necessarily, uh, we think of it as like an alleluia or a joyful kind of thing. It's, it was a cry for help. Hosanna, help us. The expectation uh, of, the, of some, if you're saying save us, is that that person would be a savior. But a savior from what? They weren't looking for someone to save them from their sins. I mean, that's how we often use, use that word savior, sort of in a theological sense. We need someone to save us from our sins. That's not what the crowds were thinking when they said save us. They were looking for someone who would save them from the Romans, right? Their beloved city was occupied by, by the Roman uh, forces, the occupation troops that oppressed them. They could come up to anyone, demand that they would give them food or shelter, whatever, whatever they needed. The cry was, God, free us from our oppressors. They were looking for someone who could help them, provide for their needs, their food, for healing for their lives. And when, when that didn't happen, when their expectations were not met, the crowd said, this, this isn't a savior. And the mood of the crowd quickly changed. When we cry out, save us to our savior, what is our expectation? There's many who get disillusioned with, with God and religion and church because it doesn't meet the expectations they had for it. So what is a realistic expectation for a Savior in our lives? Is it that God will manipulate weather patterns for our own personal agenda? Uh, God will make sure our favorite sports teams are victorious? That God will shield us from anything unpleasant ever happening in our lives? That God will prevent us or those we love from getting sick? No, I don't think that's a realistic expectation for a Savior. I think it's more real, realistic to expect that life is going to have ups and downs, 
There's going to be joys and there'll be sorrows. There's going to be sickness and there's going to be health. It's realistic to expect that life will not always be fair, that bad things will sometimes happen to good people, that we live in a broken, sinful world where things are not the way they're supposed to be or the way that God intended them to be. So where does a Savior fit in? If Jesus isn't somehow a super Santa to give us what we want if we've been nice, then, then who is Jesus? Well, Matthew be- began his gospel with that very question in mind. We talked about this last week as well. And when the angel comes to Joseph, he says, he shall be called Jesus, for he will save them from their sins. Uh, he will be a Savior. But then he says he will also have the name Emmanuel, right? God with us in the midst of the brokenness in the very midst of the unfairness of life to let us know that we are not alone in the joys and the sorrows and the sickness and health that he will be with us through the body of Christ the community of believers through hot dishes and listening ears he will be with us as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death and will be with us beyond the grave with the promise of life everlasting. Let's go back to our text. Then Jesus entered into the temple, drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold the doves said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things he did and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you not hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you not read? Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany and spent the night there. We call this week Holy Week. It's our time to slow down, to pause, to reflect on the mystery of faith. All the parables, all the teaching, all the miracles of Jesus were all leading up to this, to the cross and the resurrection. They weren't simply a temporary fix for a problem we were facing. This was a new way of life, a new way of living for those who would follow him that was steeped in hope. It was my hope that you will join us as we, this this is sort of one long service. We begin it today, we continue it on Thursday, we continue it on Friday, and then finally bring it to conclusion a week from now on Easter. I hope that you will join us throughout this week as we reflect on this passion and resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Get Joan up here, sing a good old Advent hymn. Usually we don't think of Advent uh, during Lent here, but this is a, it's one that tells the story of preparing the way for God in our life. Prepare the royal highway. I invite you to rise if you are able.